Good morning and welcome everyone to the Money Control live stream. You're watching Markets with Santo and CJ in association with M Stock by Mirai Asset. However, there is no Santo today. The, our sanity check, you know, personified has taken under the weather today. So clearly it's just going to be me and I'm going to utilize this opportunity to convert all you Santo fans out there into team CJ. So watch out for that. So let's dive into this show. Let's get started. It looks like we are in for a muted start after the sell off that we had seen yesterday. If you look at the Nifty futures on the XTX, they are indicating a flat to moderately positive start on Dalal Street this morning. Now Wall Street saw heavy losses but ended up you know sharply recovering at least some of those losses but ultimately closed in the red. However, Asian stocks have started largely on a positive foot and the big thing is that crude oil prices are continuing to nose dive as this at this moment. Uh, Brent futures of <coughs> crude oil have actually slipped below the $110 per mark uh, per barrel uh, mark, which clearly should be a positive for Indian markets. That said, now let's quickly dive into some of the stocks that I feel you guys should be watching out for in today's session. And remember, there is no sanity check from Santo, so it's all bulls in this show today, this morning. Starting off with, uh, we have uh, HCL Tech. So now clearly, we have seen the sort of correction that. IT stocks have taken, you know, this year, clearly a lot of them have been beaten down, down 20 to 30 percent from the 52 week high and it's still taken no exception to that. But I feel that, you know, given that correction, the, st the stock is now looking quite attractive. If you look at what CLSA India had to say today, they believe that, you know, according to a lot of channel checks, it seems like companies outside, like in the US and in Europe, at this point of time are not cutting down their IT budgets. In fact, they're going to go with the IT budgets that they had planned at the beginning of the year. B remember, this is before Russia invaded Ukraine and their world turned upside down, right? So clearly, the demand environment for IT sector will remain quite strong throughout the 2021 or uh, 2022. And CLS also believes that the deal inflows are also going to remain quite sturdy and quite strong for IT companies. So for, in my opinion, Given that sort of commentary, HCL Tech, after almost 20 to 30 percent fall from its highs, becomes a no-brainer in my opinion. Another stock from the IT space that I'm going to watch out for, but this time from the mid-cap space, is CoForge. Now, um, clearly, one one stock that again has taken a lot of beating, but recently, the past one month has uh, you know come off significantly from its low. Clearly, there is some bargain buying happening on that counter as well, and there is now at least some hope that. 2022 as well could be a very good year for CoForge, especially on the back of the strong outlook for its earnings going ahead. Now, if you look at its order book, that has been quite sturdy and the management also indicated that the order book will remain quite strong going into FI23. Apart from that, remember CoForge has a very heavy share of uh, you know clients in the travel industry, in the tourism industry, and this is one industry that is looking quite good uh, this year with reopening of in economies, COVID uh, heading into the background, clearly this segment of the company's uh, revenues are likely to do better and that for me is quite a positive. Apart from that, valuations themselves have also corrected significantly. At this point of time, the stock is trading about 20 times as one year or two year forward earnings and that clearly for an IT company like CoForge with a small base and a long growth uh, headway uh, ahead, clearly makes for a very reasonable bet uh, in this, this sort of market environment. Now, I know what Santo will tell you, right? Santo will tell you that, CJ, come on, the US is heading into recession, the Europe is heading into recession, so demand and deal inflows are likely going to suffer. At this point of time, it doesn't seem like there are any indication of that. Apart from that, he will warn you that, you know, margins are under pressure and they will remain under pressure because IT companies just can't hire people and if they, if they want to retain their talent, they are paying over the, you know, over the top wages and salaries at this point of time. So clearly those are two headways, headwinds on the margin sides for IT companies. But I feel the rupees depreciation, that could offset the balance in favor of IT companies going ahead. Already the rupee has depreciated 4% this year against the US dollar. And I think that could prove to be you know a counterbalance to the sort of margin headwinds that IT companies have seen. Moving on, the next stock on my list the third stock on my list is from the banking space. Now, this is Ujjivan Small Finance Bank, um, one stock that was 
probably out of favor throughout of 2021. I mean, they could not have had a worse year than FI22. Bad loans, microfinance segment, uh, you know, getting into a slowdown, restructuring book uh, rising, clearly a lot of negative factors on the counter. But Q4 indicated that a lot of the worst is now behind. If you look at what Money Control Pro had to say about the stock, they feel that after a bad FI22, the worst is behind for the counter at this point of time. They also indicate, uh, you know, uh, pointed out that collection efficiency has now gone to 100% for the company. Even in the restructured book or the restructured loan book, you are seeing that collection efficiency has risen towards 100%. So clearly there are positives there. Apart from that, slippages are also coming down on a sequential basis. Now, this is very good for asset quality of Ujjivan, which has been quite bad. If you look at the absolute numbers in terms of GNPA, they're still close to about 7% for the, uh, for the uh, lender. So clearly, one thing that is looking quite uh, positive for uh, Ujjivan Small Finance. Apart from that, from a growth perspective, uh, guys, if you look at the microfinance segment, this is one segment where a lot of lenders also, you know, large lenders, are quite optimistic. Now, why the optimism? Clearly, the economy is recovering from COVID, uh, there is a lot of reopening happening and small businesses are now coming back on stream. And small businesses require working capital loans, they require loans to grow their business. And that is one segment that, that a lot of brokerages, a lot of uh, bankers are quite optimistic about. So clearly things might be looking up for Jeevan and this year could be you know, a very good year after the sort of negativity that we saw in FI22. Now, Santo here, if he was here, you know, he would tell you that bad loans are still quite big, you know, CJ, and therefore that could be a risk going forward. I take his point, I would have taken that point, but I just feel that if sequential improvement continues to happen, I think investors would be willing to give the management their vote of confidence. Apart from that, the only risk right now is that if there is a downturn in the economy because of high inflation, because of the RBI raising interest rates, that could end up hurting the recovery in the microfinance segment. So that remains one risk, I, I agree. But overall, at this point of time, given the sort of attractive valuations that the bank is offering, clearly this is one stock to look out for. Next up is Fireman Industries from the auto ancillary space. Now, this is one stock, you know, even though the two-wheeler space has been, you know, in a slowdown over the past two to three years, this stock has still been able to consistently deliver good earnings performance. Uh, the Q4 was quite strong and the outlook also from the management was quite uh, strong for FI23. They are still seeing a lot of market share gains in the LED headlight segment, which has uh, been, you know, one of the revolutionary products that they've been able to bring in. Uh, Analysts believe that the rising share of LED headlights in their overall, you know, products uh, mix is clearly going to benefit the profitability of the company going ahead because LED headlights are actually high margin products. And because they make high margin on this, their margins overall are going to get quite a boost going ahead in the coming years. Apart from that, the EV space. Now, this is, you know, an up and coming space for a lot of an an auto ancillary companies. And we have seen, you know, within the EV space, the two wheeler space has been the one that has seen the maximum growth at this point of time. On a year on year basis, two wheeler EVs have grown about more than 400 to 460% uh, at this uh, in FI22. So clearly, demand is there. And for five industry, this could be, you know, another segment that they could, you know, look at to capture more growth opportunities and gain market share there going ahead. At this point of time, they're clearly not only looking at EV two-wheeler manufacturers in India, but also abroad. So the export and the domestic side of the business is looking up for fire industry. And this is one stock that clearly investors should be watching out for in the, in the next six to uh, eight months. The last stock on my list is one name that has taken a lot of beating the past one, one and a half months. It's Ultratech Cement. The stock had hit a 52-week lo low not so long ago, but I just feel that, you know, the sort of earnings momentum that Ultratech had on the back of it before the entire Adani Holcim deal happened and they, the company ended up announcing a ma massive capex, I feel that that makes the overall uh, valuation at this point, point of time quite attractive for investors who, are, who have a very longer term, uh, longer term time frame for investment. It can, you know, the argument is that it can continue to deliver solid volume growth going ahead. That is what Goldman Sachs is saying. They have still retained their buy target on the on the stock and have a price a price target buy rating on the stock and a price target of about 660 to 661 rupees. So clearly, not all brokerages are, brokerages are turning negative on this counter, even though the sentiment on the street still remains quite quite low. So 
this could be a quantitative guys you have to watch out for is uh, i mean there is a possibility we could see another 5 10% downside on ultratech going ahead but for a longer term time frame given the leadership that it enjoys this is one stock that could end up doing a lot well uh, you know in the market going ahead now if santo was here now he's he's one guy who had always been quite negative on the cement space especially after adani's entry into the into the space uh, after they acquired acc and ambuja cement from holsim uh, he would have you know warned you that bargain buying in a sector like cement at this point of time could end up burning the fingers of investors clearly there is going to be margin pressure for cement companies going ahead now why that would be the case there are two reasons for that of course we know that adani is coming into the uh, sector and it is going to come in as a number 2 player and adani is not just coming in to you know just rest they are going to go out there and try to capture as much market share as possible from everybody not only ultra tech but even players who are below them so clearly that is that is going to affect you know how their margin uh, you know how the pricing is going to be uh, going ahead clearly at this point of time even though adani has not started to make any moves in the market margins uh, pricing or cement prices have already come under pressure if you look at north india south india and even eastern in india prices are indicating uh, towards a downward slope heading into the monsoon season which usually tends to be quite a weak uh, quarter for cement companies during monsoon most of the construction activities tends to halt in south india western india and eastern india so clearly that is going to be one headwind for the earnings of ultratech going ahead apart from that on the negative side you know uh, there is also an argument that ultra tech probably should not have gone with the sort of capex that they have gone with at this point of time they could have probably acquired more companies you know smaller companies out there who would which would have helped them which would have helped the entire cement space capacity remain stagnant while ultra tech itself could have gained market share but ultra tech went to the other route they want to now do greenfield capex which means they're going to add about 40 to 50 million tons of new capacity over the next 5 to 6 year and that is going to you know the concern is that that is going to overall increase the supply of cement in the market while demand so far has not been really catching up that said in my point of view ultra tech still being you know a multi bagger if you look at it from a 10 to 20 year point of view the stock has always delivered good returns for investors its valuations have now become reasonable after sort of a runway that we saw in the past two years clearly the valuations are now qu quite attractive and for me this is one bet that is going to work out in the future so doing just a short recap it space looking good coforge and scl tech are clearly two counters that could benefit from a you know a little bit of a bottom fishing uh, on on that uh, sector uh, re recently lara securities had uh, argued that the correction that we have seen in the nifty it it actually has sort of bottomed out near the previous cycles high and that tends you know goes to show that probably the upturn in it sector over the past one and a half two years was probably a secular move i mean a lot of people were doubting it including our good good friend santo but i feel that i also agree with elara securities you know observation here that probably the trend in the upturn or upswing that we had seen in it sector from the start of 2022 mid 2022 2020 uh, clearly is one for the long term it is clearly a 4 to 5 year cycle that a lot of management uh, you know people in the uh, it sector space were also indicating so scl tech coforge watch out for that apart from that in the lending space watch out for ujjivan small finance bank this is one counter that could be a counter trade out there for people who have a higher risk appetite especially retail investors guys you guys can watch out for that stock and lastly five industry so five stocks you guys really need to look out for because these could be very good bet bullish bets in 2022 that said i think we have the market open and as suggested it has been a muted start to the market the nifty is higher by about 0.2% at this point of time uh clearly leading the gainers on the sectoral side is nifty bank higher by 0.15% mid caps are doing better actually guys is the mid and mid and small cap space that are doing better the nifty mid cap 100 index is higher by 0.6% at this moment if you look at the advances and declines clearly in the favor of the bulls at this point of time the nse advances are about 1100 whereas the declining stocks on nse are around 453 So clearly a positive start. I hope that this sustains throughout the session because remember a lot of sell on rise is happening in this market. A lot of technical analysts are also not confident that any sort of bounce back is going to sustain in this market. So be careful out there. Trade with you know agility and nimbleness at this point of time. Do not try to take too aggressive a bet. 
especially on the trading side. Investment side is a different argument. A lot of stocks have now corrected significantly. You guys were waiting for this correction. The correction has come. So it's time to, you know, loosen your purse strings and probably start bottom fishing in this market. That said, with that, we will conclude the show for today. Uh, thank you so much for joining in. Please post your feedback on the comment section below. And uh, yeah, keep following us on the social media links that you can see at the bottom of your screen. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. We are available everywhere for you guys to connect with. Apart from that, for all your financial news, I don't need to say it, guys. Stay tuned to moneycontrol.com and the Money Control app. I'll catch you live again at 3 p.m. with all the day's action, but without Santo.